You good? Yeah, yeah, all good. How are you, man? Surviving. Surviving. I said surviving. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> surviving. I said surviving. There is absolutely not a surviving. That's it. You good? Are you, where, where, where are you? Where are you based? London. London. Okay, West okay. London. So, okay, so you what? You you're not based in Paris. No, no, no. I've been here oh, okay, for years. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I thought I've you were been... based in Paris. No, I've been here twenty years now. Oh, okay, okay. So how's, not, how's that going for you? Uh, obviously, I know. Obviously, I know it's going well for you. <laughs> well, not at the moment. Is yeah, it? not. I mean, not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your trim saying? Have you got? Have you? Did you just go bold or like? Have you? <laughs> Listen, bro, it's just it's dramatic right now, bro. It's dramatic. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Fucking yeah. It, but we're all in the same situation, so it's not mm. like... Did you, did know. you kind of think it would be a short period? Or did you think this was going to be a no. long... No, because obviously, like, we, we all knew what was going on in China. Yeah. So it was one of them, like, well, like, okay, they've been closed for God knows how long, the same in Italy. And the minute they put this kind of, like, that kind of social distance in place, that was it. It was like, well, we kind of fucked that. All the kind of, like, music venues, like, bars, yeah, yeah. pubs, clubs. That was it. This is done. That's it. Mm. You know what? It's, uh, when did you kind of start getting to know in your gigs, like, this is actually going to be, this is going to come into place, like, the, the whole lockdown situation? Like, when, when were there less right. people in the clubs? Do you know what it is? Is this. Obviously, thanks to um, social media, what happened is we, <clears throat> we could see what was going on in other countries, especially in France and in Italy and Spain, like, two yeah. weeks before that. You know what I mean? So... Um, and also following the different clubs from across the world, you could see that, you know, some clubs in Asia, some clubs in Hong Kong and Singapore, they were just closing down. So two weeks mm. before it was like, yo, okay, cool, guys, there's something coming right now and everything. So yeah. the beginning of March was like, right, people were still coming out as normal. Do you see what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people were still coming out. Yeah, don't worry about it. So I would say that the first week. The second week, it was just like, <clears throat> right, okay. Uh, people started coming up with masks and stuff like in their face, like what? Okay, what's going on, kind of thing. Um, then, uh, yeah, then slowly but surely, at the end of the second week of March, yeah, is that the week after, like club owners started calling me like, right, okay, cool, forget about next week, <clears throat> forget about next week, forget about next week, literally. And it happened like Monday, Tuesday. We said towards the thirteenth, and that was yeah. it, done. That was it. You know what I mean? So I but, heard what um, like Liberty were trying to do like a little thing just before lockdown. Like what was happening with that? Just like, before, it... yeah. Just before they were trying to do what because basically what happened is most clubs were closing down. But obviously yeah. Liberty's big nights are like Saturday, Sunday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? And obviously, um the weekend prior to that, okay, all yeah. the clubs were kind of found some into a hands where okay, are we gonna close, are we gonna stay open, are we gonna close, are we gonna stay open? And Literally, what happened is Libertine was like, well, since like, all the club, all the other clubs are closed, we mm. might as well stay open. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then obviously, <laughs> but then obviously, like, and they were busy. They had tables and they were fully booked. But yeah. obviously, it gets to it goes to a point when it was just like, well, uh, no, actually, we're not gonna open. Now like, we're not crazy uh, to that mm. level and stuff. And uh, yeah, we're gonna close down because you know it's bigger than us and bigger than club because we're getting yeah. money right now. So that was so it. So, with the, with, obviously, the lockdown got a bit eased today, uh, and it's yeah. getting it's getting easier to get, go out and everything in the next couple of weeks. Do you think it's too soon, or do you think it's the right time? Um, I think is um, <clears throat> but this is my point of view. Okay, it's only mm -hmm. my point of view. Eh? I think is um, it's a bit too soon. I would have yeah. waited till the end of maybe. Yeah, to, to maybe like the end of June. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, now, being realistic, when it comes to club, yo, like, I'm, I'm thinking next year, maybe December. As long as you have social distancing in place, you have to... But how do you social distance in a club? That's the you thing. You can't. You can't. You, you, I mean, you, you can't. You know what I mean? The whole point of being in a club is that talking to people, like guys talking to girls, you know what I mean? It's just like... You know, you can't, you can't, you cannot yeah. operate in this. You know what I mean? It's just impossible. Let's be realistic. If you had a restaurant, you could. Is that two people that come in and everything, but it's kind of in a club, you can't. 
because mm. you want to have them. The whole psychology of a club is that being together, not being separated. So yeah. this is why it's just fuck, like literally. It's, it's, it, you know what? It's, it's the worst time to be in because for us lot, we have no clue when clubs are going to open. Like obviously restaurants and shops are going to be open in the next month and a half, two months. But yeah. When, 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 yeah, no one even knows about clubbing because that's going to be the lowest thing they're going to even think about I'm, I'm, putting back. I'm going to be very honest with you, yeah. No one knows, yeah. okay, that's for sure. But they will be the last to open. That's, yeah. that's about 100%. Okay, theatres, maybe cinemas will be even before clubs, to be honest. Mm. You see I think that too, because I think that's too, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, they'll be literally the last one. Like, yeah. literally. You're talking about confined space, um... Yeah, small environment, people touching each other, people are drunk, they don't really care. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, the last, definitely the last. So me, I mean, <clears throat> I'm saying like September, maybe like mid-October. Uh, yeah. Realistically, December. But Bro, but December's going to be mad because Christmas time, everyone's going to be out. So that's even worse. <laughs> that's worse, what I mean. Man. So it's kind of like, yeah, December, if not next year. But I'm yeah. just being realistic. Like for me, I'm like I'm thinking like yeah, next year, like next year. So Honestly, you're planning, you're planning for next year basically. Your your whole mindset yeah, changed like, next year. You you have to understand like obviously everything starting late over here, and because they didn't implement a hard lockdown, yeah, it will last even longer. Do you see what I mean? In yeah. France, for example, tomorrow they are reopening restaurants. That's mm -hmm. tomorrow, but they had a hardcore lockdown for two months and a half. But do, do you think we should have yeah. done that? Do you think we should have done that hardcore Definitely. lockdown? Definitely. Definitely, because you can see now the results in all the different places. Like, when you go to Germany, they had a hard lockdown. You yeah. see what I mean? For like something like four weeks, they had one. You go to Italy and everything, and you see the number of deaths. You look at France, they have, like, 50 deaths a day. Over here, it's 500. Like, come on now. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's, it's just being, <clears throat> being realistic and stuff. You know, as long as you're going to have that, well, you're just not going to have any clubs. But all the, your... obviously, other, other countries... They understood. They just like, well, listen, we can't just stay like close forever. Yeah. But most of all, we need tourism, so we can't just be here on some like, well, hey, we're not gonna open. And you need that tourism. You need these people to come. You need to open the clubs. You know. What I mean? Yeah, definitely. So, like, this is what happening in like, in Greece, for example, and in um, in Italy, in the south of Italy, but also in Spain. Yeah. You need that tourism. You you need it. You know what I mean? From within Europe. So they're not even talking about the UK because right now with Brexit, they are talking like tick for tap, which is, well, okay, from the eighth you need the quarantine, but you too. Do you see what mm. I mean? When you come over, same, you need the quarantine, you can't go anywhere. What are you going to do? Mm. you see what I mean? So you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot, kind of, you know. Well, so how, what's fine. your take on Dubai kind of, <clears throat> Dubai are kind of running the 50% capacity kind of thing? Do you think we should do the same or just wait till think... everything's safe? Do you know what it is? In Dubai, the operators, obviously, like, it's, it's a lot different because a lot, of that, a lot of the time you have conjunction with clubs. You see yeah. what I mean? It's like the clubs with the hotel. The, so, obviously, like, the costs are totally different. Over here, at 50%, you, I don't know the business model of most clubs, okay? I don't know, like, the break-even point exactly, like, when they're making money. Mm. But, obviously, for a club, you might be thinking, yeah, they break even in the West. I'm talking in the West End. They break even yeah. point might be between something a night, might be between like five and 10, right? Yeah. Okay, cool, fine. But on average, you make something like 20K, which is mm. on a bad night, on an extremely bad night. You make 20K, right? Yeah. Okay, that's normal. That's like before, the, before that. So if now you're opening at 50%, you're making 10. Why would you yeah. open? There's no point. You might percent. as well just wait. It might as well just wait to get a bad you night well 20K. Wait. But the problem is this, is that now, if, if you go and open... And if you go and wait, you still have to pay the rent. Yeah. And the rent in the West End is a killer. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So some club owners, they're going to be on some like, well, okay, cool. I'm paying for something that is close. But my rent is like, is that 400K? Mm. And I'm close. And the government is not giving me any money. Now, if you don't have that money, or if you have that money, you're thinking, God, like, I'm about to literally like, spend a million pounds on a yeah. business that is closed, waiting for a vaccine. Come on, you can't. You can't. So, I mean, no, like, no one can afford. That's the thing. What? Like, are you scared about these clubs? Re like, are they even gonna reopen? Like, obviously, I know West End will probably reopen because they've been there for so long, x many years, and 
they're always going to be there because that's part of it helps the economy as well and everything but other clubs around the, around London and stuff like that do you think they're going to even reopen I think what so it still depends what type of deal they have do you see yeah. what I mean what type of deal they have with their landlord and stuff and if their landlord is giving them a bit of leeway and stuff like mm. it's all, it's, what is the deal do you see what I mean like, yeah. and also if, as, as an owner you have to think right the government is not giving me any help yeah. I'm making way too much money Okay. Now, if you're a good club owner and you're not into crack cocaine or you haven't and prostitute and you haven't spent all of your money on that, mm. well, you have some money on the side. You can actually like say, well, all right, cool. Well, I can pay the rent for the next few years if I have to. I'm good because I have something solid. You see, what I mean, I'm good. Yeah. Like, I've got something solid, so I'm good. But a lot of guys don't some yo like they don't have the same philosophy. They don't some yo. I'm not gonna pay a rent for something that might be closed for the next something like what two three years. Mm. No way. Well, also, you know how like obviously West End, right? Most of the most of the money being spent are from the overseas people, right? Like the the Arabics, the Russians, all of them lot, the footballers, all of that. So they, are they even gonna come back? Because obviously you have to self if you come here, you have to self isolate for fourteen days. So even when what? clubs come back, I don't even know if that will still be in place. It could be, it could not. But are they gonna what? travel back here? But here's the thing, okay? A lot of people, for example, summer is coming. They're not gonna come to London. Let's get yeah. real. That's it. You know what I mean? Like. You have all these other places you can go to and you don't have to quarantine, which are mm. Ibiza, Mykonos, Greece, like Italy, Spain, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you can go to these places, right? Now, when it comes to September, obviously the football will restart, okay? Yeah. Students will come back because they want to finish their year. You yeah. see what I mean? So everything will be a lot better, okay? But a lot of people, because they got hit so hard, so hard during these three months, they won't come back. Mm, a lot of people definitely. lost their job. A lot of people just don't want to come back. They don't say, you know what? Like they had a taste of maybe like something else. They're just like you know, no, like that's not me. That's not me yeah. anymore. A lot of people are going through divorce, through breakups. You know, they lost their job. So they don't say like, yo, I don't, I don't want to come back. I don't want to be here right now. I want to be somewhere else because yeah. obviously now we have access to information and you can see different countries the way they dealt with it. And you're like, well, I don't want to be here. Why? Mm. Why should I be here? Why I can course. be somewhere else? That's it. That's the situation right now. It's yeah. It's a tough situation. That's it's, literally it's, it's a, a it's a tough situation, situation right man. now. The situation is really really hard and stuff because like, I mean, yeah. I mean, over the years I've seen a lot of DJs making kind of like a lot of money and yeah. spend it all. You see what I mean? And like in the field that I'm working, for example, a lot of DJs that I know, they are living week by week, like every week, bang bang bang, every week. You see what I mean? Mm. And they went from every week to zero. But that's the DJs. Then you have the promoters. Then you have the bartenders. Then you have like so many different kind of like levels. There's so many different club. levels, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That went from literally like God knows how much money to zero. Yeah. And it went from zero for like a month. Mm. It went from zero for two months. And you have no money coming in. Because remember, like you're a DJ, you don't want to pay your taxes. You just like, you get paid, whatever. Next thing you know, you don't get, you don't get you don't have anything. What you don't have anything. Do? You see, what I mean, I'm, right now you're not gonna have anything for a long time. For a long yeah, like, time. Yeah, because and also the thing is about the pricing as well. What I've been asking other DJs is like, how are you how are you pricing yourself after this after this period? Because obviously you can't. You, yeah, it's so hard to price yourself. You can't. You can't price yourself. You have to get realistic. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, and. This is where a lot of DJs are kind of like getting confused with them, with the economic reality of running a business. Because let's yeah. face it, a lot of DJs are not businessmen. You know what I mean? They love music. That's what they do. They spend their hours on that and everything. They don't see it as a business. Okay? So, mm. realistically, you're going to have a market when you're going to get DJs from, like, from the upper tier. From upper tier. Literally, like, DJs, guys were on videos. Guys, mm. um... Sorry, Charles said, said I'm not taking. Charles said I'm not taking pay cuts. Oh, for fuck's sake, Charles! Get. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, <laughs> get. Fuck sake. Get. Anyway, <laughs> listen. So, yeah. So you're gonna have DJs literally who had an entire season. Literally, yeah. they had no gigs. You know, like, you have a lot of DJs. For example, you and I, we don't know about these guys, but they do like festivals like everywhere. You see, I mean, literally, they, they have festivals. They are DJing something like three or four times a week across the world. Right now, they're at yeah. zero. And these guys are, real, are, are relying on that money. And these guys got like 100,000 followers. 
200,000 followers. You see what I'm saying? But these mm. guys now, they're going to be like, yo, like, what's going on? Because everything is close. And nothing is yeah. going to come back. Like, Pepsi wasn't back for a long time. What are we gonna do? Yeah, right, I was I was speaking to Nathan Doe about that, and he was I was like, when are eighty thousand people gonna get into Arena or something like that? It will be so long. I well, don't know when like, it will happen? But bro, this is the type of guy. You see, for example, somebody somebody like him, I can yeah. see somebody like him going DJ and Kevin West in tomorrow. Mm. Why? Because he's on some like, guess what? Like, what I can bring you X amount of people. I can't bring you any tables, but I can bring you X amount of people. Okay. Yeah. Now this goes because there is still some. Yeah, but the crowd that you bring might not be our crowd, but we take like the ten percent, the most like, good-looking one. We take them, and this is something that us normal DJ we are DJing every week are not known for. That we're not known to yeah. bring a crowd. We're known to please that crowd. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. this is the big difference. But most of all, is like, you can't price yourself anymore in the same market because you don't have the same amount of people who are going to the club. They're not spending yeah. the same amount of money. You don't have the same amount of girls. You don't have the same amount of footballers. A lot of footballers, they're on some like, you would have an agent on some like, yo, like, you're playing football right now. The virus is still around and everything. You're getting checked for every game. You can't go out there to a club. So we say yeah, the money definitely. will come down. When the money comes down, you can't, you can't come and pretend to the same salary as before. So you have to work with the business owners and be on some like, yo, listen, all right, cool. Let's work, let's work, let's make in the long term. You see what I mean? But mm. you have to be realistic. You can't pretend to be on something like go to a club. Yeah, guess what? I'm charging 1K. Okay, cool. That was in January. But in December, we're going to But now it's the same, yeah. Yo, people are not going to run to the club. The thing yeah. is, the, the promoters yeah. are going to start yeah. laughing because they're going to be like, well, where, where, where are we getting this money from? That's what I'm saying because you have to understand it's like, again, like it's a business. The market yeah. will come down. The price will come down too. It's, it's normal. You see what I mean? It is mm. extremely normal. And believe me, that like, club owners won't make that much money because they're on something like, Yo, well, listen, like, I was paying you X money before, but yeah. right now we don't have the same amount of people. We don't have, we don't have the same level of business coming in. How are we going to make money? You can't do that. Do you see what I mean? Like, you have to think about it being like, realistically, it's either like Charles is saying, Literally, you have to make your own events. events or, yeah. Otherwise, you can't pretend to that. You don't pretend to turn to a club owner and tell him, by the way, yeah, I'm charging you X amount of money, like in January. But yeah, but I don't have the same amount of people. I don't have the same amount of traffic. You've got to run up a bar spend. Money coming in. You've got to run you up can't... a bar spend to your own event kind of thing. But if, even if you do, if when you do your own event, you can come on your own price. Do you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Again, when you do your own event, you have so many variables. And so much mm. money you need to put on the table. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying? And you have to get the return. You have to wait for the return. And if you don't get that return, that's when that for 99% of people out there, they give up. And they go back to the same circle. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I see so what you mean. So it's yeah, really yeah. like, it's, it's a very, um, it, will, it will be very interesting when clubs will, will be open because a lot of DJs, they will not understand the... Um, the economics of club, they won't get yeah. it. They will be on some point, but no. But in January, you explain with that, and the club is busy. Look, the club is busy. Bro, bro, I've been to clubs that are busy, like five hundred people. Look at like the numbers at the end. You make ten k, and you have like, five people. What the fuck is ten k? When you break even, it's ten k. Mm. You just bro, bro, like the club was busy. Remember, we made no money, bro. Like how? Yeah, especially Central London was 10, 10k is nothing, bro. Like, some bottle spends bro, a 10k, it's a, bro. It's a joke. Like, some, some, oh, bottle, it's some bottle spends a 10k. Oh, like... <laughs> what, you know what I mean? Like, you can't, unfortunately, like, is like, you, you just need to adapt. You just need to adapt. You just need to reinvent yourself. But you just need to move on, most of all. Like, it's kind of like, you can't be here. It's like, I'm waiting for this club to be open. Especially yeah. if you are a DJ. You can't wait for them to mm. make shit happen. This is what we did with Charles. We started doing Zoom parties yeah. while doing it actually extremely well. We get people, we get more and more people every week and we just put our event online because we're thinking, well, guess what? Like, we're not going to wait for those clubs to open. Yes, mm. they close and everything. But right now, what we're doing? Like, right, we're going to do your own platform. Like, you, no, it's not even having your own platform. You kind of like, you are the master of your own destiny. You see, mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot wait on people to make shit happen. If you have to go and make yeah. your own shit happen, make your own shit happen. Right now, I mean, we live in a world today 
where realistically, if you have a pair of turntables, if you have that, whatever kit you have at home, you can go out there and DJ. Just put yourself online, like, yeah. you know? And it's not about having one guy watching you or two guys watching you. Of Listen, sometimes we do Zoom parties, we have 10 people. I have fun. These guys have fun. That's what, yeah. my, that's what you DJ in the first place. I read a book Yeah, it's not ago, about the numbers right? as well. It's not about that. It's, it's really not about that. I read a book years ago. It was about... Um, Fuck! It wasn't the Beatles. It was um. It wasn't Gun. It was a. It, it was about a rock band. Okay, and yeah. um, these guys, they were saying like, listen, our first gig, we had like fifteen people at our first gig. Okay, mm -hmm. but it was a big rock band. I can't remember the name. Anyway, and right, people who came out that gig, they were just like, oh fucking god, like, sh wow, wow, you guys did not have to give that much energy you didn't have to but yet you did to say man yeah. and then they became one of the biggest men ever and what i would like to say is kind of like sometime on these parties for example i might do the warm-up i literally i might dj for myself but i don't give a fuck because I'm sorry bro yeah yeah we need to have that favorite it's not about that it's never about that it's never about that. It's about you providing literally entertainment. Mm. But I think for yeah. a lot of guys, what they don't understand yeah. is kind of like, it's the visual. You know what I mean? It's realistically the visual. What visual can you actually bring? What makes it entertaining? Why would I watch it? It's a totally yeah. different medium right now. So in your opinion, what makes your set unique as a DJ? Why do you stand out if, uh, out of all the other DJs around in central London and around the UK and... Well, um, first of all, I don't think I'm that different. That's A, we all play the same track and everything. Yeah. Like but I would say because of my experience and because I love the sound of my own fucking voice, so I love shouting shit on the mic, um, <laughs> I would say that's what makes it different. And the fact that I, um, I understand vibe. Do you yeah. see what I mean? A lot, of people, a lot of DJs, they have the records but they don't know how to build the vibe. The vibe mm. is everything. You see what I'm saying? Like the vibe yeah. is absolutely everything. You know, you can have, like, we all have the same record, it's cool, you know, but it's a bit like football. It's, what you, like it's what you do with it. Right, right, okay, fucking Charles, you can. Fuck you, fuck you, Charles, <laughs> shit! <laughs> Charles getting into it, bro. <laughs> don't be humble, you know I'm humble, shit! Anyway, so, <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that it's a bit like football. There we go. Mm. Charles is going to run away now. But anyway, <laughs> like, it's a bit like football. We can all go and buy a football in a shop around the corner. Doesn't mean yeah. you're going to be a footballer. Do you see what I mean? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Do you see what I'm saying? To make it as a football, you need to train and you need to have that passion. That's it. For yeah. me, I think that because I've been DJing a long time, I've been going out every night for maybe like 10 years between 2000 and 2011. Every night. Right, to listen to other DJs, but most of yeah. all, I was listening to their mistakes. I was listening to what they were doing right, you know. And obviously, I, adap I adapted it to my set. And mm. this is why, obviously, now when I go to, to a club, I know exactly what to do to get the people dancing, to get them happy yeah. and stuff, and to really realistically mm -hmm. making sure like these people kind of like keep coming. That's what it is. It's kind of like you have to. Um, you really need to look at it in a different way when you're doing I'm trying to provide every time. It's like, every set, I'm like, right, okay, cool. What am I going to do today that's going to be different from last week? And, like, it's not even about playing some new music, but maybe kind of like, thinking differently and play some old shit. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And bring okay. it back and everything. So when, when a promoter or manager comes up to you and says, what are you going to bring to the table? What do you tell them? My black balls. <laughs> Uh, no, you, no. Uh, you went. You went in the wrong. You went in the wrong job, bro. Go comedian. Go stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually, you know what it is. Usually, right. So I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah. In the West End, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, it really doesn't work that way. Honestly, it doesn't. Okay, it's because I've been here a long time. Okay, yeah. literally, and I was lucky that some people like Charles, for example, like Charles introduced me to that circle, for example. Yeah. I was not even aware of that. The world kind of like, 
West End nightclub, posh club. I didn't know. I knew I didn't. Because I was DJing in the West End, but more in the ghetto club. Mm. You know, like 20 years ago, you had a club called like Capital Club or whatever. So these type of places, I was in there knee deep, like Smiley P and stuff. Then DJ Swing and Dr. Yeah. Psycho, I was warming up for them. Rest in peace, both of them and everything. But yeah. these guys, by watching these guys, it, I learned a lot, right? But in the West End, the way it works is like, right, for example, let's say you have X Club. They will look at the flyer of that club. They will look at the DJ and they'll be like, all right, okay, who is this guy? I want this guy. I want that guy. It's a bit like football, but yeah. on the next level. I'm saying, right, okay, cool. I want Ronaldo. Okay, but Ronaldo is expensive. Okay, cool, but I want Messi. As expensive. Okay, I want that guy. Well, he's as expensive. But the clubs, like in football, they are literally looking around. They are literally looking around at who's DJing and who's coming back on these flyers. And mm. then they hire you. So it's got nothing to do with like how you DJ, how good looking you are, what you look like. Nothing to do with that. Honestly. It's if you're getting, I mean? if, it's basically if you're getting a bookings in the right areas at the right time, basically. Right, yeah, yeah. And this is why like with that agency, for example, because I'm not going to lie. I and mean, I said, when I arrived here in England, like back in 2000, the level of the DJs in England Bro, like, like Money Note was good. Shorty Blitz yeah. was fucking already was like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, like Psycho was like, you know what I mean? Like, these guys were just like, whoa. You see know what I'm saying? Whoa, right? So when we arrived, when I arrived, okay, and when same with Charles and stuff, it's kind of like we had the background of, of hip hop in France. And in France, we had this guy, yeah. cut killer, like whatever, whatever. So obviously, all we had to do was emulate, was copy this guy and be like, right, okay, cool, well, guess what? I want in. So whatever we were here, I was just doing what these guys were doing. Do you, you see what I mean? Like, it was mm, not mm. that hard. It was really not that difficult. Do you see what I mean? But yeah. with, the, uh, with the arrival of the internet, and YouTube especially, a lot of DJs in the UK literally changed. It was just like, well, okay, cool. Now we can DJ. Now we can do that. Now we can do this. Now we can scratch. Now we can do. So we see you had all these DJs that were out there that all these clubs in the West End didn't know about it. Yeah. And Charles and I we were just like, but we have all these guys that we know that are absolutely fucking amazing. Yeah. And we can't get them in. Why? Why? Literally, mm. why? Well, what's going on? So after years and years and years of booking amazing guys, Charles and myself we decided, you know what, yo, we're just gonna open an agency. And we're yeah. going to literally get all the wicked DJs, all the best DJs that we know, we're going to bring them to the table. We don't give a fuck where they're from. We don't give a fuck what they look like. They can't, we don't care. As long as you're a good DJ, it's on. And that's the motto of our agency. We're not on some... Listen, we have some DJs in our agencies. They have like 50 followers. We don't give a fuck. As long as you're good. Amazing. Do you see what I mean? But they're mm -hmm. fucking amazing. So I'm going to go on to that as well. Does following on Instagram matter? as well as your following? Yeah. Well, today, for club owners, yes, he does. You know, some, well, we can't have that guy because the guy's got like a thousand followers. Same for promoters, it's just like, yeah, they have a thousand promoters. They have like 5,000 or 6,000 followers. So a lot of promoters, they, they have that philosophy. And I totally understand it because they have their brand to protect. They have yeah. their brand that is there and they are bringing somebody to their brand. Okay, mm. right. Now, I don't have 20,000 followers, but in that circle, I have a reputation because I've been DJing every night. Yeah. So we see people, I bring that trust on some, why? Right, okay, I don't want to have a headache. I want to see that doesn't have an attitude. And here's another mm. thing as well. You know, in these clubs, for example, like you might be here and scratching and being like DJ Khaled or whatever. And then you have one waiter <laughs> coming up to you or something like, yo, like, I want to have the national anthem of um, Italy right now. Okay. Cool, no problem, man. Let's go. Cool, woo, wow. But a lot of DJs on some, not right now, motherfuckers, not right now. I'm scratching. I'm about to do that. Obviously, the waiters on some, but like, we, we need the show. We are selling. Do you see what I mean? It's a team effort. Do you see what I mean? It's yeah. a team effort. A hundred percent. Definitely. So when you DJ in these clubs, it's not about you. It's not about you. Literally. It's about that, like, right, guys, how can we actually, like, literally sit down together? It's a business. It's a business, basically. It's a business. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. literally a business. Do you see what I mean? Is that 
you have to think that like McDonald's, that like, same shit. They have shows. They want to fucking spend money. Cool. No problem. I'm here to make sure the people are spending money. Do you see what I mean? Now, the problem is when it comes to Instagram is that people are so kind of like cleared up on it. A lot of promoters mm. say, well, yeah, that guy is good or whatever. Bro, I've been DJing for a long fucking time. I've seen people with like a million followers and they could fucking DJ to save their life. Do you see what I mean? Like, they come. Yeah. And you just like, but, yeah, but look, like, you know, he's going to come and DJ and he's going to bring one table. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Great. You know what I mean? Like, great. I understand the psychology of it. I totally get it. For me, personally, I'd rather have, uh, me, personally, I'd rather DJ that makes sure that like, every leaves the club on some, like, yo, it was amazing. It was an amazing night. Uh, my God, I had fun. Like, uh, I'm that. And having the mm. guy, like, yeah, he's, he's got a million followers, but he fucking plays some fucking bullshit. Like, what the fuck? You know, yeah. like, it makes no sense. Okay, so I'm going to go back to where you were saying you kind of, when you started up your agency uh, and you put the DJs in, back then was it easier to do this yeah. than nowadays? Because now, would you be more inclined or less inclined to invite people into that circle? Like, it, it's, it's a bit of a hard one. To be honest, kind of like, again, you, with the agency back then, okay, if you wanted to get into an agency, you needed to have a certain talent, you need to have tracks, you needed to have something yeah. going on. You needed to be on the radio, for example, you needed to be somebody. Or like, yeah, you went to do a TV show and uh, you don't really have a career, but guess what? If you go and DJ in Brighton, fuck it, you're going to make some money. Uh, they're going to book me there, do Brighton, Birmingham, this, 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 that. Yeah, okay, cool, no problem. You go and do that, right? But the problem is with our agency today, we just want quality. Do you see what I mean? So yeah, it's all good that you have 20,000 followers and whatever. It's cool. But for me, like, it's, it's something, for example, that people don't get today, right? It's like, okay, can you send me a video of you? And they are literally send me a 15-second Instagram story. This is me DJ. But, bro, like, come on now. That's not, that's, not, that's not DJing. Send me a video of you DJing for 30 minutes and then yeah. I can make up my mind because I'm a DJ myself. Do you see what I mean? Like, yeah. Don't send me a video of 15 seconds thinking like, that's oh, wait, that's what, like, <laughs> like, I played yeah, one yeah, track. Cool, you know what I mean? Like, same with some girls sometimes. Like, some girls sometimes, I text you, some girl here, yeah, by the way, I'm looking for my DJ and everything. Bro, like, they sent me 15 seconds of them DJing with their tits out. I'm like, babe, I don't give a fucking tits. <laughs> You're lying to me. I don't give a You're fucking tits. Like. You see what I mean? No, but, but for real, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you look like. Like, we really don't. We really do not mm. give a fuck. As, as long as you can DJ and you good, it's on. It's on. It's literally on. Then you have, yeah. like, like Charlie said, and sometimes you hear, and you're like, okay, yeah, send me uh, some videos of you DJing. And they're literally in the bar, and they're playing Mobamba. I'm like, okay, bro, like, yeah, it's a big tune. Yeah, so fucking what? Like, we all have a track. Mm. You send me, we all have it. I'm not asking you to fucking DJ on top of a fucking <laughs> iPhone tower just to show me. Yeah. DJ. I'm telling you, send me an iPhone out of you DJing live. Okay? Yeah. I don't need to see your hands. In it. I just need to see if you understand rhythm. A lot of people do not understand fucking rhythm, but yeah. it's fucking mental. They don't get it. It's just like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? You, you go from 100 to 70 to 130 to... What the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> do you see what I mean? Like, sometimes yeah. I fall. I, honestly, we get so many videos. I'm like, my God, if somebody has sex with you, they'll be shot for fucking life. But you see what I mean? Like, it's, it's deep. It's yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. It's deep. <laughs> No, say it, Siva. It's it's the main thing I would say is is yeah, is realistically to fucking yeah, like work on your craft and stuff, and then like send it to agencies. You have some agencies out there; they have different policies. They have policies. Our policy is very simple: be fucking good, be fucking know your shit. We don't care if you play yeah. fucking techno, German bass. We don't give a fuck. Just be good. That's it. Mm. So are you, with the agency at the moment, are you like looking for people or are you kind of just wanting to stick to always. the DJs you got? Always. It's an agency. Always. Yeah. We are always looking for people. We are all looking for good DJs. We are always on the lookout. Always. The problem is 
we reach a point now in our agency where we only have so many, like we have so few clubs and so many DJs. You see mm. what I mean? So a lot of yeah, DJs yeah. on some, yeah, bro, like, when are you going to meet? And I'm like, yeah, bro, like, you know, these guys, these club promoters and club owners, they want to have that because we send them the best that we know. We are, okay, cool, well, yeah. that guy is good, we send him there. Boom, they go, they stay. You see what I'm saying? Club owners are telling yeah. me like, yeah, okay, cool. That's it. Mm. So it's very difficult and stuff. And this is why now we we're literally in the second phase in February to start to expand outside the West End and then go throughout the UK and start selling DJs that we're willing to travel. We're yeah. literally there. Well, we see if I can right now. It's just like we're in our house. <laughs> obviously, you can't do that one. Yeah. Like, what's, what's your take on like the whole DJ scene at the moment, though? Like, obviously, not during this period, but just in general, like, um, Obviously, you were saying that a lot of people just, yeah, you, we have the same tracks, but it's what you do with it. Do you think there's a lot of people who just get the top 50 and then just play it, and then that's it? Well, the thing is, right, okay, think about it, right? You have to think of, like, I'm, again, I'm talking about the club in the West End, okay? Like, yeah. it's a business like a radio, okay? When you are on a radio, or when you want to play, let's say that like, I'm an advertiser, okay? Mm. I'm gonna call Kiss One Hundred. Maybe on some air. Guess what, guess what, guys? I'm sitting mouse. I'm I'm sitting mouse. I'm sitting a mouse. All right, cool. No problem. So, what is your target market? Our target market is eighteen twenty-five. Okay, cool. Well, that's my target market too. Cool, wicked. Let's go with guys. And you playing that music for that target market? That is perfect. Yeah. Like, I can advertise with you. Let's go. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. Do, mm. do you understand that? It's the same with the club. A lot of people are coming down. I read that everywhere. It's like, oh, yeah, I don't play commercial shit. That's, that's your shit. That's you. I respect you. That's your choice. Fine. I don't do that. No club promoter can say that to me. No club owners can say that to me. It's cool. I'll never book your ass, and I make sure I never fucking do. But it's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's cool. But it's cool. Mm. But you, you have to understand, these clubs, the, the way they work, it's like, yeah. no, like, Okay, this is our target market. For example, let's say Libertine. Okay, they want something like our target market is footballers. Okay, yeah. So footballers, they listen. Are they listening to hip hop? They are listening. To listen. Okay, cool. Some of these footballers, they are from Ivory Coast. Some of them are from France. Some of them are from Belgium or whatever. Yeah, cool. Can you entertain them? Yes, I can. Cool. Let's go for it. That's all it is. Don't try to reinvent. The you just world. gotta fit the bill. You gotta yeah. fit the bill, basically. Don't fucking smart. You know what I mean? It's like that's why these people are coming to you, to that club. Yeah. This this is why they come in there. Now you as a DJ, I'm like, yo, like, all right, cool. Well, I'm not gonna fucking start playing some house music. These people who are coming here, mm. they didn't come here for that. They came here for this. Do you see what I'm saying? So your job yeah. as a DJ is that. Sorry, bro, I just lost you, boy. What, what did you last say? I was just saying... Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just need to adapt. That's it. It's the, the, there's some delay. There's some delay. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, now I can. Oh, the Shit. delay is like very bad. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. What do you What do you do? What do you? Do? <laughs> yeah, I can't hear you, but there's just a delay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let me call back. Let me call you back. Just, just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come back in. I didn't do anything. Okay. Call you back. Yeah. Call you back. Right, we'll get, we'll get back, we'll get back. <clears throat> I don't know, Learn some, I'm learning some notes here, I'm taking notes, like, I'm learning a lot of things here, um, I don't know what you guys are saying, but it's very interesting, very interesting. <clears throat> who's inside, who's inside? Charles, if you're still inside, I'm going to DM you after this as well, get an interview. 
All right, let's get him back. Let's get him back. Yes, Afwan, my brother. Mm -mm -mm. Right, 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 right. Live at 8pm. Who's live at 8pm? Oh, you. Sorry. Sorry, I thought you meant... Wait, who, who's li What? <laughs> yes, Yo. bro. Yo. Yep. All good. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 all good, all good, all good. Wicked. But cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's literally the same thing. Like, like I was saying, is you, you need to adapt and realistic, realistically, you need to be on some, like, you need to understand what is the psychology, like, what is the psycholo psychological level of a club. And you need yeah. to match yourself to it. And you need to put your ego on the side. Shout out to DJ Interius is there and everything. You see, that guy, great mm. fucking DJ. Yep. Great attitude. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. That guy will go far in the West End and internationally because he understands. You see what I'm saying? Like, the mm. guy understands what the fuck is going on. You yeah. see what I mean? And I'm sure, like, he's going to be he's gonna do great when he's going to go to Ibiza and all these places because he's like, he proper understands this shit. The guy doesn't have an attitude. He gets it. He's just like, all right, okay, cool. So I'm here to fucking DJ. I'm here to play records to a bunch of girls who are literally on Spotify all day and TikTok <laughs> all day. Yeah, all right, cool. I can do that. Yeah. But bro, like, that's but the you, level today. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? That is the level. But like, it's not even, you know, he gets it. You know, and this mm. is what's important as well is that it's so, but everybody can scratch. My daughter, she's three years old. I'm teaching her to fucking scratch. You see what I'm saying? Now, nah. anyone can scratch. Yeah. But it does not mean shit if you do not understand selection. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You don't understand how... You don't understand how to build the vibe, how to please a crowd. Well, you, you fucked from the get-go. And on top of that, if you have an attitude, yeah, definitely. People will be on something like, yo, wait, what? Like, is that guy giving me an attitude? Yeah. <laughs> I said, bro, you guys got to shut up. Fuck you, Charles. <laughs> 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 All right, so in, in your career, in your, in, your, in your career, looking back at your career so far, I'm trying, shit. Um, what's been the highlight for you? What's been the highlight for you in your career? Bro, there's a bit of delay Ooh. again, man. You, you've, your 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 Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi is your Ooh. Wi-Fi is moving a bit I mad. I would say, oh, bro, there's been a few. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wait. paying your bills, bro. This guy ain't paying his bills. Wait, <laughs> this guy can you hear me? Wait, wait, what, what? Yeah, I can hear you, but the delay is just bad. Like it's like a five, six second delay. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> This All right, guy. fucking up. All right, cool. Well, oh, let me one minute. Give me one minute. Yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? <laughs> the FBI is on to you. That's the FBI is on to you. <laughs> yeah, there's like, I thought it was just me. I thought it was me, you know. And then when I heard, I he was like still when I was talking, and then that's it. <laughs> oh my god Should I just get rid of him? That's a bare copyright infringement <laughs> It's like a hero <laughs> They're back or just leave it like that Okay, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone Alright, uh, you know what? He, he's the one who needs to pay his flipping Wi-Fi bill It's not me, man My Wi-Fi is paying <laughs> It's doing bits right now but yeah, I hope everyone's doing well though. Like, for people who don't know me, who are inside, I think, let me just check who's actually inside. Now I think everyone kind of knows me here. But yeah, I've been doing this for eight weeks, so we're, we're down eight weeks in. Um, I'm going to carry on doing this till clubs reopen, to be honest. Like, I don't, I don't see the point in ending it until there's no one else to interview. Like, every day I'm getting new people, so at the moment, 
it's it's going well. But yeah, thank you to everyone joining in and listening in. Like I know it's I know some people don't really want to listen to these things, but it's good. <laughs> But yeah, I appreciate everyone joining and listening in. Especially Earthphone, I see you, bro, all the time. JSG, I see you as well, bro, all the time as well. Inside, we're going to build that. Yeah, bro. We just got to build it up. Yeah, right. We got to... Well, I hope it's better. <laughs> <laughs> right, highlighting your career. Highlighting your career. Highlighting my career. Fuck me, bro. I was like, oh, they've been a few. I'll give you two. I know you got loads, but I'll give you two. Um, I would say when I played for Prince at his concert. Um, not at his concert. He did an after party at China White. Yeah. And I played for him for like two hours, and he came with like his entire crew. Cool. That was just like mental. That was that. That I could remember. Oh no! That's mad. When we went to play. No, no, no. When I went to um. Uh, when I went to Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, to play for Leonardo DiCaprio's 40th birthday huh? at the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. Which huh? Charles was there. Charles at Oh, Marco. my yes. God. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. How, do, yes. how did that even How did that even happen? How did that it's, come about? We, we know a girl. Fuck it, I can't remember her name. Shock. Fuck. <laughs> we go away. Yeah, we know a girl and stuff. And she's, she's friends with all the celebrities and stuff and everything. So... She's well connected. What's the fucking what? <laughs> Becky. There we go. Oh, shit. Oh, uh, shit. Becky. Some yeah, Becky, yeah, some Becky girl, bro. <laughs> what? What fucking Imagine Becky? if she joins in. Imagine if she yeah. just joins in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> different Becky. It was a different yeah. Becky, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, Becky, she, she hooked us up and stuff. Really last minute. She was like, listen, guys. I said, um, people know I Becky. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, someone's gonna send this live to her, bro. Someone's gonna send it. <laughs> I bet. I bet you, Charles was. Charles has already sent it to her, bro. It's like, <laughs> ah, shit. Um, but yeah, yeah. Becky and stuff. Yeah, she called us now, like, really last minute on some. Listen, um, it's Leonardo's birthday. It's in Egypt. It's uh, yeah. We just like, all right, cool. Then she's like, yeah, we're doing a marquee at the bottom of the pyramids. I'm like, uh, are you fucking saying this? Yeah. yeah. You need to do some more. <laughs> All right, cool. cool. All right, bro. Bro, so the delay, the delay is coming back. <laughs> are you, are you in another, are you in another country? Fucking, I'm paying my bills. Yeah, you're in another country, bro. What is this? <laughs> I actually can't do it. Your, your delay is bad. No, I'm here. I'm in fucking London. It's you. Yeah, how is it me? I'm in, I'm in South London, bro. What's South to West London? Like, what? Man said he's trying to move. Man said you're trying to move the camera. Man said he's trying to move the camera, bro. I. Right. Oh, my God. Is I don't know who is it me or the was it me or him? I don't actually know. Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> I'm so... Charles might just have to explain it on the chat to be honest. He might actually just have to explain that. Right, right. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Bro, yeah. pay your bills, man. I know it's but tough I, times. I know it's tough times, yeah. but pay, please pay your bill. So, um... Yeah. Oh, my. I... <laughs> Alright, <laughs> right, this is... <laughs> I can't actually take... I gotta take your bills, I'll bro. Bill. I'll, I'll, hold, I'll put some contributions if you need it. <laughs> I'm so dead. Where? Bro, do you know? Do you know? Do you know how B Tech? Were you on Tesco's? Are you on Tesco's Wi Fi or something? What's what? PayPal. PayPal. I said PayPal. I said PayPal. <laughs> this guy's just leaving. Oh my. Nah, what? You actually, your Wi Fi is taking the mic, bro. Just switch to 3G. Switch to 3G. This looks like. <laughs> right, that live was too funny though. How everything just crashed. Bro, switch yeah. to 3G. I did. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's better now. 
Better? Yeah. That's a bad luck I I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it personally. I would. <laughs> hey. Alright, bro. Are you busy after this, or are you are you free for a little bit? Because we. No, no, no. After this, I have to go and pick up my my daughter. So oh, okay, 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 okay. But yeah, we'll get we'll carry on for five minutes and then we'll read it. We'll do this again. We'll do this again. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But yeah, um, yeah, we just went there. Egypt. Uh, Charles was there. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah, definitely for me, like the top two. But then obviously, like when you DJ in a club in the West End, you have so many. Uh, you can't even remember, bro. Like I met yeah, everyone. Yeah. Everyone you could think of, I met them. You know what I mean? Like, every single rapper, whatever. I've How do you like, kind of deal with it? Are you just humble? Do you have to stay humble? You kind of, is there like a little fanboy in you that like, oh my God, it's whoever? No, to be honest with you, I've never been a fan of any rappers. Maybe, really? No. I mean, no, no, no. Honestly, no. It's just like, I, um, uh, yeah, I met everyone, but I've never been a fan of any rappers. So for me, it was just, ah, I called you, whatever. Like, yeah, this guy's coming to rap. All right, cool. It's coming. All right, cool. Yeah, whatever. Can I get a picture? No, all right, it's fine. Like, you know. And I think it's very important as well. Like, if if you, um, when you meet these guys and stuff, like, it's just guys like you and me. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Being like, 100% of the time, they're very cool. They're very humble and stuff. Like, just want to party, get drunk, and, like, you know, get some chicks. So, what I would say to everyone is, is like, whenever you know an artist is coming to the club, and his DJ is not with him, don't play their shit. Just play something different. Play something they never heard. Especially mm. here, and like you have so much good music now. Just play some UK shit. You know what I mean? Like now you can get like, the entire night. Yeah, it's just, literally like, I don't know, like if you have a rapper coming to the club, bro, like just play some next shit. You don't have to play their shit. They already heard their shit. I mean, they don't need to hear yeah, it yeah, again. Definitely. Like, come on. Yeah. What's the best you club know? you've DJed in? I be careful what you say in case your residencies get taken, yeah? <laughs> that's a hard one. That's a hard one. That's a okay, hard I'll give one. you no, best club one. in best, best club in London you've DJed in and then best club elsewhere. Um Right. Okay. When you say <laughs> Make it quick, you've got two minutes. <laughs> right, okay. When you say best, for me like Yeah. Um, if you say venue in terms of the space or whatever, I, I you're, you're going too you're going too political into this, man. Like, <laughs> no, because no, you I, know, okay. You know what it is, it's kind of like, no, because no, no, because you know what it is, is that in the west you have some very small clubs that are amazing, that are absolutely fucking yeah. amazing, like undeniable. Okay, mm. now you have some spaces, and the way they use that space is just for mind blowing because you go there, you just like wow. Okay, for me, mm. Cafe de Paris is one of the biggest clubs. Yeah. In the West End, it's busy than there for like 13 years, but it's the way the club is. Do you think it's underrated? Space. Yeah, it's underrated. That club is fucking beautiful. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's beautiful, okay? Yes, it's very old or whatever, whatever, but that what makes his beauty. Now, in terms of vibe, bro, like, for me, like, every single club I've got, has got a good vibe. You, even if you make the vibe or whatever, every single club has got it. Do you see what mm. I mean? Like, there's no best club or whatever. It's kind of a... If you have a good DJ, you you get a good DJ on a regular basis, you get some good people, you will yeah. have an amazing vibe. Do you see what I mean? But it's you have a lot of club, they don't have necessarily Well, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. Here we go, here we go. All right, bro, you've we've got twenty seconds, yeah. So what's 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 the best one elsewhere? What's the... <laughs> no, I'm good. I don't know what you oh, said. You're gone, Mykonos, you're gone, you're gone. Beautiful club. Oh, Mykonos. Beautiful. Yeah. Calm, man. But, bro, Mykonos, like, I appreciate yeah, this, man. We'll definitely, we'll definitely do this again. Bro, I've only...